Hello guys, we're back with five things we learned. Uh, the game uh, West Ham to Manchester United. One, guys, sorry for what you're seeing today. Your boy has problems with the eyes. Uh, I will have to be using less from time to time when looking at the computer. But look, especially with the lights which are here. But yeah, guys, Manchester United lost yesterday. Some will say very unfairly. I think unfairly yesterday against West Ham. But uh, it wouldn't change my opinion. Congrats to West Ham United for for getting three points. I know these mistakes come up uh, often, uh, but um, it's not their fault that we had a referee who was uh, uh, actually uh, put under pressure to make a decision that he didn't want to do it. Uh, who, and, uh, I want to say, number one, one of the things we did, we saw yesterday, is uh, something that the Premier League has to look very carefully, you know. I remember the idea of bringing Inva into football. I think I'll take this out, guys. Guys, they're doing some renovation in my hotel, so I'll take this. Uh, out. Look, I think the, the, the whole idea of bringing bar was to help things like offside, like really goals, touchline technology has been there. VAR was something to improve the game. The VAR is becoming very slowly a mafia in football. We have been fighting mafia in society in general. We want fairness, but it seems VAR has been, come, has been playing a role as a robot of the game. VAR has been determining who will be champions, who is going to win a game, who is going to draw? VAR has been something which has killed, has destroyed the, 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 the real essence of football, which is that unpredictable. I mean, we, people don't rejoice when they score goals anymore with VAR. So I don't see any, I don't see too much profit of VAR. Let me put it this way. We had the goal line technology. I think it was all right. The up VAR had to be left only for offside and really serious situations. But I think um, the Premier League has exposed the weakness of VAR, and please guys, this guy called um, uh, Michael Oliver, right? This guy called Michael Oliver, uh, I, I think uh, he, is, uh, he is such a, I mean, uh, he's such a, a guy, this ref, this referee who was here in the, I mean, you can see uh, what even uh, Gary Neville talked about the refereeing, right? That, you know, this guy has been, um, he really influenced this game, this Michael Oliver coach. Uh, sorry, uh, my head coach, damn coach. This Michael Oliver uh, referee, he was one of the referees in the touchline, in, in the in, uh, behind on the wood bar. He's one of the guys who made that wrong decision, who in, who insisted and pressurized the referee to give a penalty, which wasn't a penalty. Football, you football is a game of contact, not hard contact, but contact. Football is in volleyball. I know some of you might be saying, Ralph, is because your team lost. But one of the things I can say, I don't want to put it along because we have a 10-minute video here, is that VAR is destroying football. Look, uh, there used to be a law where players could not be transferred in January. Then the Bosman law came. I think was to, uh, was uh, was I think Bosman law came in the, in the late 90s. Uh, I'm not really uh, sure what the exactly date, but there was a Bosman law that has helped a lot of players not killing their career in clubs that don't want their services in the, and they are mostly moved on in Gen uh, during the transfer window in January. For those of you kids who are just new into football the last 20, 30 years, in the 90s, there were no January transfer windows. It was just a break and that's it. So a player's career could destroy the whole season if it wasn't used. So um, the Bosman law came and that had helped a lot in that. Uh, also, uh, about uh, also it helps generally of giving players powers if they want to move up to another club, and especially when they are not used by their club uh, or the parental club. So uh, I think something that we've done about VAR. Oh, oh my lord! This guy only when I'm doing a video. Let's go straight to the second point, guys. Um, the second point here is uh, Eric Ten Hag. I think. Uh, we need to. We have been complaining about United losing the game, but Eric Ten Hag needs to take a blame on this. The first half we dominated. I don't know what we were doing. We lost an open goal, goal from a, a certain Dalo, which I think was abysmal yesterday. Ten Hag has to be blamed in many ways, even though I think Ten Hag should not be sacked. But I want him to be sacked. The reason why I want him to be sacked is because I want people like Tonde Joy to see that the problem for Manchester United is not the manager. It's not solely on the manager. That's what I'm trying to say. Because people think that when we change the manager, we will win the league. We change the manager, we will play post football with the same players we had, we have here. It's not a question of the players even. It's a question of the way we play and if the players are ready to respond. My conclusion is that Manchester United don't have players to play good football. I don't have a, set, a system. And what is the base of the football club? The base of the football club is the midfield. I have said the best way Manchester United move forward is for us to go to play. If you were there in the transfer window, I was crying over the, the playmaker for the Spanish playmaker. 
who played for Leipzig and now is in Barcelona. You know him, Olmo, Daniel Olmo. I wanted him. I could exchange him for Bruno plus money because I want someone who can keep the ball, who can, who is very unselfish, who is, uh, who is there for the team rather for that than increasing his brand. I think Bruno has done the best with Manchester United. We need to look for a, a playmaker. We need to do two playmaker and really aggressive holding midfielder. That backs the defense. This should be a priority. You might say a goal scorer, but we score goals. Even if we need a goal scorer, I think we need to have. If we can control games in the midfield, first of all, we will not concede much. We will, uh, we, we will play well, and we might turn our opportunities to go. We can still have the same team now next season start scoring goals. So there are certain technicalities. I heard some of you talking a lot about um, someone like Van, uh, that uh, Vanis, Van Nistelrooy is not doing a good job because he's uh, he's in charge of um, uh, the attackers and the attackers and scoring. I don't think Van Nistelrooy told a player like Delo that you should you should you shouldn't just score in an empty pool. It's just just a tapping. I don't think so. I think the players need to take this on the chin. It's the players who are mostly at fault in regards to Manchester United. So I, I will want Eric Ten Hag to be sacked just because I want to prove you guys that wrong that Eric Ten Hag was not the problem for Manchester United. Even though I think he will not be sacked because the club is not an idiotic club. So uh, let's go to another point here. This is uh, what really made the game where I, 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 when I looked at this game, the highlights, I knew, okay, you know what, Manchester United, we are not going to win this game. What was Delo doing there? That was an open pole from Delo. I think Delo's this season has started very, very slowly. Delo, Delo, who was arguably our best player for last season, we have been having this trend for a long time now. David Delo has not done well. Only when I'm doing a video, that's when these guys are doing their renovation. I don't know. In the hotel bed. let me just try to close it for eight minutes we have one more minute here on earth to finish this video um the other thing we learned is that manchester united fans we need to stick very closely to our players the match going fans um we have been robbed by uh by the referee this is what i have said in the earlier of the, the game i think united uh, that game i won't take the 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 the, the, the victory away from west ham because that's what it is but I think that the mass going fans will be really angry when the replay is done and, and they see that that wasn't a, a penalty clearly. I think it's very uh, unfair for people who travel and want to pay money to, to see, I mean, to get the fair. It's just like elections. Things have to be fair. People don't have to manage elections. It has to be the majority vote that wins. So um, football, either football is football or it becomes a foot volleyball, you know, where there is no contact and, uh, you know, players play the way they want. Other thing I need to talk, uh, how do we move forward with things I need to, uh, things we've learned in this game. I think Manchester United, we need to use a player like Dalo, uh, by um, Diallo a lot. We need that creative players. We lack creativity. This is the biggest criticism in the Manchester United Football Club. We lack that criticism. If cre a creativity -ism. If we can have that in the team, I think we could, it, could, it could be a massive plus for our team in going forward. And uh, yeah, so uh, the big question now again is if Ten Hag should be sacked or should stay. So I want to ask you guys, please tell me what you think about Eric Ten Hag. Should Ten Hag be sacked or stay? And please don't tell me a yes or no. I will delete your comment. I want to know why you think he should stay, why you think he should be, he should be sacked. Because you guess what? Uh, football is a collective game. It's very, it's unfortunate that managers do take the blame. So they gave a penalty, right? That before that game, we're talking about the two managers. Those, the manager that loses the game might, it might be sacked, right? Lopatelli or, or Ten Hag. So they gave a penalty, which was a, not a penalty against Manchester United, and they keep Lopatelli's job. You see how the world is? I know the world is in flux. But it's, again, the world, we need to bring injustice to the world. Tell me what you think below. Smash a like on the video. Get involved with the United Way TV. Guys, subscribe to the channel. If you watch till now, you are real a fan. You are a, you are a legend because uh, people look at numbers before they subscribe to the channel. Anyway, guys, bye. Those crabs are taking.